Hello, this is Christopher Stevens again from New Zealand, and this is yet another instalment of what I've been up to on HCSMP, a Reddit hardcore Minecraft server. This time round, it's only really been two weeks because this month has been slightly chaotic with a couple of restarts. The first one due to technical difficulties, and the second one due to fuck ups. The second one happening two weeks into February. Um. Due to a slight miscommunication between the host and uh, our admin, uh, the server got wiped and we started again for the third time on this map. While this seems to have a long... thanks, thanks to the January DDoS issue, followed by this, uh, a lot of momentum has gone out of the server. We really need a bit more attention at the moment. Um, as you can see, this is prime time. And... Not that full. In any case, uh, after spending a month and a half in the nether, I am, or I was, quite sick of it. So apart from gathering some nether wart and some blaze rods right at the start of this third attempt at this map, I have not been back, and I've been building in the overworld instead. This here, where I'm going to start this backwards tour, is a Minoan palace. This sort of is a throwback to the very first thing I posted on Reddit over a year ago, which was a block-by-block -block reconstruction of an actual Minoan palace called Cato Zacro uh, in south e the southeast of Crete. Um, the fourth of the Minoan palaces, but palace in quotation marks to be discovered. But this one is much more fanciful. It only it contains some elements of proper Minoan architecture, but otherwise is more idealized. So let's start this tour and have a look around. As usual there's not much on the inside because I always find it really hard to actually decorate anything internally. The building took me three days in total to build though obviously storing up a bit of the um, resources took a bit longer. The about a hundred um, stacks of wood, 200 stacks of stone form the bulk of this building and on the way out of here as we visit some other things I've built I'll show you one of the deforested areas. The wool came mostly from flocks around the region though I did start up a project which I call New New Zealand which is a sheep farm with about 300 sheep in it and just going back and forth and that provides like eight stacks of wool just for some little details, over here we've got um, a sea wall with some retaining wall structures, just, you know, to add a bit to it. Um, Minoan structures kind of evolve organically, or rather, as new parts are needed, so I tried to add a little bit of planned randomness to the structure by not having it perfectly symmetrical. So I've got this, um, this uh, wing on it as well as the main structure which is much more impressive. So let's have a look from the front. As you may have noticed uh, the walls which are kind of like the whitewashed plaster type things are made out of snow because wool doesn't quite look as good and all these snow golems everywhere uh, the throwback to it. So ta-da! Um, These little arch, uh, these little U-shaped things are uh, what um, historians or archaeologists refer to as horns of consecration. And if you just type Minoan Palace into Google, you'll see these little pointy things on top of everything. Um, possibly resembling a bull's horns as Minoan legends revolve around bulls and all that. But uh, not entirely sure what they're for or if there were actually this many of them. There aren't actually that many documented cases of finding them. So I've got this nice courtyard which is kind of like the chief focus of building. Um, any Minoan palace is usually built around a large courtyard and has a surrounding complex and that's where the term palace comes from. I mean, there's no actual indication that there was any sort of royalty or whatever. Sorry about delivering history lessons. Um, sandstone is kind of a hard block to work with. The smooth side looks really good, but um, because it has this kind of 
half assed cobblestones cobblestone texture on the sides. It doesn't look very good for much else. In any case, I managed to come up with a really interesting effect. Um, as you can see with the red and black columns followed by logs and sandstone. The Minoan palaces were actually built out of sandstone, though a uh, type unique or particularly found in Crete, which was more of an orange colour. I could probably come up with some sort of Minoan texture pack for this, or possibly import all the stuff I used uh, back over a year ago to build the one that I had already built. This here is a bit of a copy of the one at Cato Zacro. Um, the, one, the largest room in the place was a banqueting hall, which had um, red stone around the edges of it, as found from the archaeological traces. This is another slightly Minoan type thing, a light well, which is, um, I mean, obviously you don't have glass circa 2000 BC, and this like the only glass is imported from Egypt, used for like ritual vessels and pouring libations and little pieces of jewellery. So I have shutters. But yeah, back over here, this is a light well to actually let some light into the palace, though it doesn't really work effectively in Minecraft. So I've used the kind of effect you get with half blocks, um, where you can let light in through them by having them stacked with a gap in the middle. I've shown you that before, I think, uh, back in one of my first videos of Half Timberton, with the lava coming through. So, pretty damn empty, but looks good from the exterior, which is usually what counts in Minecraft. The only other real architectural feature is I've built some underground passageways leading to some, oh dear, uh, leading to some of the lakes underground. So while I was digging out stone coal, I found some of these little caves and decided to make them kind of like wells for the palace. One of the chief features of a Minoan palace that I haven't really built is what's called a lustral basin, which is kind of like a little recessed room paved with white, white stones, and nobody's really sure what they're used for. Where the fuck is this zombie? Um, in any case, that's pretty much it for the Minoan Palace. So three days of work, 100 stacks of uh, logs, 200 stacks of stone, uh, I don't know, 50 stacks of wool, hell of a lot of snow, sandstone, and, you know, torches, not much else. It looks quite good uh, from this side too, in that kind of um, organised chaos. The idea is to have it built into a hill to look more natural um, than just like clearing a giant plain flat space. So I've dug down to the stone for the walls and all that, just in, you know, pedanticness. So I'm going to sail up this way, um, not too far to show you the next couple of things. So this is kind of what happens to forests when I'm around. Unfortunately, once you leave the chunk, the decay of leaves sometimes doesn't seem to work very well. But in any case, I've sort of deforested two um, pine forests just like this. The other one, about 8,000 blocks from here, from when I built the inn. Again. 
so this once used to be a proud forest, blah blah blah, blah. now it is gone. But um, it's also en route to one of the statues I built, built for this month. And you can see a red sheep over in the distance, which was part of the process. Now, if I remember correctly, it is in this general direction where there are mountains. Maybe I can get a look before the server restarts. Mm -hmm. I built four statues. This one, which is still here, excellent, is of Coyote 18, or X Coyote 18, who has a Squidward skin. As usual, the uh, helmet layer of the Minecraft skin is always slightly more difficult to add to a statue because it occupies the same 8x8 space as the face. But I think this one came off rather well. Um, the reason behind him holding a potion of healing and a potion of harm is to illustrate his behaviour in the months of January and February. In January he spent a good deal of time protecting spawn from spawn killers before ending up as yet another murderer. Oh, server's shutting down. Well, in any case, next spot will be... About six kilometers north. Alright, coming up on another statue on my way back to the inn. This one is of McFluffykins, who I mentioned in my last video and showed you his bounty. Well, since I made the video in the following couple of days, it got all the way up to 3,500 before he did ultimately get killed. So this statue is dedicated to the largest bounty this server has ever seen and it is not even nearly matched. Uh, the largest one this month was about 500 or something, 600 and something. So 3,500 diamonds, kill on sight. The seed is really bad for mountains, but um, it has a lot of these really interesting little cove areas where you've got a lake with a few surrounding mountains and they're usable, like, with a lot of work. That is, you know, uh, two-thirds as tall as a statue, and I had to level it out entirely. But, yeah, cool. Onwards! Next stop, New New Zealand. Coming up on in number five. There it is. As you can see, it is in the ocean. This is not something I recommend to ever do because dredging water is the worst thing ever. Fortunately, I have Respiration 3, which made it marginally easier and slightly less deadly, but still annoying. Quite a number of people have actually found this one since it's in a non-obscure, well, I suppose it is in a ridiculously obscure location, but they still found it anyway. In any case, they have left some signs around and been doing strange things in the accommodation. As usual, not much decoration on the inside, a few books. Yeah. Downstairs, since this time I am not up against the bedrock, um, I've built some bare barrels again. Um, the bounty plugin has been updated with lapis blocks being worth half a diamond, so I'm surprised nobody's run off with those considering that Nerdia stole the iron I was using for these barrel hoops. So, yeah.
Yeah. So, obviously, Robot Dude has been through here. I'm not sure about anyone else. But that is pretty much it. So I've got my beer barrels. This was going to be my ice room, but, um, again, the iron was stolen, so I could do it in wool, but it'd look a bit shittier. I haven't even bothered to leave anything upstairs just because it would... Bleh, what the fuck? Um, it would be stolen. Right. I might go have a look at the other statues. Or I might not. Yeah, let me in the boat, you... Right, just coming up on the space where I built Tab Monkey's statue. Tab Monkey, along with Random902, was promoted to the role of admin this month. However, Random already had a statue for his Slaughter of the Steves, so he does not get another one. Now this is one of the coolest locations I've actually found on the seed, on this map. And let's see whether it is intact. Tab Monkey has been doing a cracker job with handing out the bands. Oh yeah, it is still intact, which is extremely surprising given that the axe has solid gold in it. I am really legitimately surprised that nobody has destroyed that yet. Um, and the fact that the grass around it has not crept all the way up probably means that there have been very few, if any, visitors. Oh. Well. Next will be Latrop's statue. The last one. Alright, coming up on Latrop's statue now the last one that I built this month and dedicated to him for his services to enchanting and grinding. Apparently he had about seven mob spawners hooked up into one spot. Granted, it took more than one person to activate all of that at once, but uh, still, industrial strength. see whether this is intact. Yes it is. Excellent. And the grinder, the mob spawner, is still got pigs in it. That's great. Ah! It seems as though the tick rate has been cranked up to 11. Why 